Good morning. <laughs> I invite you to stand as you're able to turn and face the entrance of the sanctuary. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in time of need, and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Welcome and thank you for gathering for worship this day. It's a joy to be gathered in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us at home as well. If you're a guest with us, all are invited to the communion table. Our shows invite you forward to receive these gifts of God for the people of God. We'll place a wafer in your hands and then you can pick up one of the cups. There's red wine and white grape juice. We have gluten-free. Let us know if you need that or if we can bring communion to you in the pew. All are welcome. A few announcements. One, today we're going to practice a fire drill during worship. Uh, so in the spring we practiced our tornado drill. Today we'll practice. It's a lovely day, so we'll take a little walk. Uh, the real alarm will not go off today, so we'll have a little uh, sound to alert us. And there are three exits in the sanctuary, one behind the choir, one right here, or you can go out the main exit. You can also opt to remain in place. Uh, we'll go. The intent is to gather in the north end of the parking lot. If there were a real uh, fire emergency, we'd ask you not get in your car and leave to block 
for the emergency vehicles. We'll gather, and then we'll come back. So optional uh, to be aware of leaving and coming back. A little fresh air on this beautiful day. Sunday Book Club meets after worship, starting a new book. Tuesday morning at 8.30 is Sewing Circle. Wednesday afternoon is Pinochle Group at 1. And Wednesday of this week is the first handbell choir rehearsal of the fall. Uh, so if you have questions, you can ask Terry or show up Wednesday, lower level at 6. I invite you this Thursday to join me uh, and the community. We're gathering at the square for the Turning Points uh, Domestic Violence Prayer Vigil, our candle vigil. It'll be at 6 p.m. on the square, and you're invited to gather. In the past, we've had people travel to Honduras to visit the school. Our endowment sponsors through Lunches for Learning. If you are interested in that travel opportunity, you can ask Cindy or Andy, uh, who went last year. And I invite you to continue to hold all in your prayers for uh, the devastation of the hurricane this past week and flooding. Uh, Lutheran Disaster Response is equipped to respond uh, quite quickly. So it's an important ministry of the greater church. And we give thanks for your continued prayers. Blessings on this day. Thanks for gathering. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now it's a great joy to welcome new members in our congregation, so I'll invite you to come forward. Uh, people have committed themselves to the ministry of Grace Lutheran Church. So we are welcoming today Alex, Jake, Colton, and Ava. Come on up. Brianna, CJ, and Ivy. Andrea and Tom. Tina and Greg. Carrie, David, and Adeline. And Blake. A few who could not be here today, but we all gathered last Sunday, a conversation with council and staff, and we are so, so excited to meet you, to know you, to be a part of uh, this community together. So I invite you all, maybe as you're walking there in a fire drill or after, uh, to find a way to say hello and to get to know one another. And now I ask you to join in prayer. Almighty God, by the love of Jesus Christ, you draw people to yourself and welcome them into the household of faith. May we show your joy by embracing these new brothers and sisters as we bear your creative and redeeming word to all the world. Keep us close together in your spirit, in the breaking of bread, and the prayers and service to others. Following the example of Jesus Christ, our servant and Lord. Amen. Welcome. Thank you. A reading from Numbers. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, if only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, uh, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, and all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses <clears throat> was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servants so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a sucking child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where am I to give meat to give to all this people? 
for they come weeping to me and say, Give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting, and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And the young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Word of God, word of life. We will read Psalm 19, verses 7 to 14, responsively. Psalms are found in your red ELW in the front section, beginning on page 339. Again, Psalm 19, verses 7 to 14. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. A reading from James. Are any among you suffering? they should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Word of God, word of life.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than you to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And children are invited for it. Come on up and join me. A special welcome to Ava and Ivy and Adeline, our new members. <clears throat> well, you guys are going to be glad there's just a few of you because I have a surprise. I decided to bake a batch of cookies for you this weekend. But to spare the crumbs in the pews, I put them on the snack table in the back of the narthex so you can go and grab them after church is over, okay? But since I was going to bake some cookies, the first thing I did was I got out my cookies cookbook. And I looked through a lot of recipes before I decided which one to use. And one thing I noticed about all the cookie recipes was that they all used at least a cup or two of sugar. But they also used a pinch of salt. Now, it makes sense that cookies would have a lot of sugar because cookies are a sweet treat. Why the pinch of salt? Well, the reason is that salt makes sweet food taste sweeter by reducing bitterness. But it only takes a pinch, because you don't want your cookies to be salty tasting, do you? Now, some of you may be saying, OK, hold on. I didn't come to church for a cooking class today. What does this have to do with our Bible reading? Well, you might remember that Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, said, you are the salt of the earth. And in our listen today that Pastor Amanda just read, Jesus talked about salt again. In today's closing verse of the gospel, Jesus said something like this, salt is good for seasoning, but if it loses its flavor, how do you make it salty again? You must have the qualities of salt among yourselves and live in peace with each other. All right, now you're thinking, like always, I'm just a kid. How much good can I do in the world? Now remember, most recipes call for just a pinch of salt. That's not very much salt, but it changes the taste of an entire batch of cookies. If you don't have that little bit of salt, you definitely will notice that there's something missing in your cookies. There's a lot of hatred and bitterness in our world today, but if you and I show the love of Jesus in all that we do, we can be the salt of the earth like Jesus called us to be. Just a pinch of salt can do much to reduce bitterness and bring peace to our world. Let's say a prayer. God in heaven, we are only children, but we ask you to help us to be that pinch of salt that will flavor our world with your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
I'm not sure what you may or may not know about the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Tanzania, or if you, like the group who gathered here this past Wednesday, know anything about where in Africa this country is, or about its history, or something about the town of Arusha, or the North Central Diocese, which is a companion synod to our Northern Illinois Synod. But when we had the honor this past week of meeting Mary and Elizabeth and learning with two guests who've been traveling across Northern Illinois for the past month, Mary began by telling us about her adult children and grandchildren. Later, Elizabeth would do the same. We learned a little bit about each of them in our short time together of a grandchild just weeks old before they started traveling a month ago of a nine-year-old who has since turned 10. And we listened and learned, asked a few questions. And by the end of the evening, we sang a song together in Kiswahili and in English. We could only learn so much in one hour, but we know more now than we did before sharing time together. The basic way of introducing oneself, of how they chose to start a little glimpse into Mary and to Elizabeth's lives, reminded me of someone who had shared with me about an interaction they had had with a professional nemesis of sorts. Now, someone who had persistently attacked them in their work life. And then one day they found themselves seated together at the same table. And so the person telling the story asked the other one about their family. It was a simple follow-up question to something that had previously been shared, and they said they noticed the tension go down just a tad. That is until there was a little forced reciprocity, for the one who first asked this other about their family then pulled out a few pictures of their family and started to share with them. And they said they could tell that this other person was brimming with unease. They did not want to see this person in this way. To look at the picture and to listen to their story would be polite and expected of them, but it would be much easier to not consider the whole of this person's life. This other colleague perhaps would have preferred to keep tearing their opponent apart in an online public sphere, attack at any window of opportunity, but now they were face to face with a glimpse of their full humanity. How often our differences or our perceived differences divide? How convenient it can be to overlook the parts of ourselves that are so fundamentally shared and held in common with others. For that workplace rivalry, talking about family seemed to broaden their point of view of each other. These two people have plenty to disagree on, but they both have other people that are important to them, and they are important to other people too. And when people from Grace from our congregation gathered this week to meet our speakers from the Kiyutu Parish in Arusha, Tanzania this past week, hearing just a little bit about these two women as individuals gave us an entry point to then learn more about their church structure, their daily life, the history of becoming companion congregations and synods. At the end of our gathering this past Wednesday, I overheard someone say, if only everyone had the opportunity to travel, what a difference it would make in our world. If we could see and learn from people who experience daily living in other ways, to discover at the same time how much we hold in common despite perceived differences. Now, if you worshiped last weekend, you might recall that we heard the disciples were arguing with each other about who was the greatest. 
Not only was there an eagerness to differentiate themselves from each other, but they wanted to claim a hierarchy in their order and their value. And Jesus disrupts all of their ideas, defines greatness as being last, as serving everyone. And then Jesus picks up a child in their midst and teaches about welcoming the most vulnerable. Now, as the story continues today, Jesus is still gathered with his disciples, likely has this child sitting on his lap, and we hear the next issue that's brought forth. The disciples saw someone casting out demons in Jesus' name, but they tried to stop him because he, they, this other person, was not following them. Now, I think in maybe one of the least generous readings of this, it sounds a little bit like a tattletale. Teacher, teacher, look what this guy did. We tried to stop him, don't worry. But in a more genuine way, this seems like a real concern to the disciples. They are just trying to figure out what it means to follow Jesus, and they want to get it right. The stakes seem high, they're told, and so they have a narrow view at this point in time of what it takes to follow Jesus. So if this other guy isn't following the, their way of doing it, he's probably doing it wrong. But Jesus redirects the disciples. He says, don't stop them from casting out demons in my name. Whoever is not against us is for us. Team Jesus is pretty broad, expansive, inclusive. There is a wideness in God's mercy. There is room for different ways of following. The disciples should not be so quick to get caught up in their perceived differences of faithful ministry because God's got this. Jesus then warns the disciples to not cause others to trip up. Don't place a stumbling block in their way. Don't get in the way of a little child or someone newly following Jesus. Instead, work around the things that try to separate you from God and neighbor and carry on. Jesus is shaping the identity of the early church and cautions even the very first disciples against infighting, and misplaced competition. People would do well to be less preoccupied with critiquing and comparing and judging each other and instead recall how God in Christ is ever and always at work gathering all people to God's self, all into one body in Christ. Jesus' heart and energy and mission are not set on settling inside divisions between people, of ranking who is following whom or whose way is greater or better. Jesus is instead set on caring for the most vulnerable in the midst, lifting up the child before them. Jesus is set on building up community instead of tearing it apart. The reach of God's reign is wide. I hear Jesus' words to his disciples and wonder how we might respond today. Perhaps we can put effort into affirming and rejoicing in really interesting ministries that are not ours. Other congregations nearby we know, neighbors of faith at different places of worship, sharing a common faith in the love of God, the good news of Jesus. Or maybe we'll sustain a bit more curiosity and connection with people in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Tanzania. We learned that there were 120 compromands in Mary and Elizabeth's parish last year. We learned, too, that Sunday worship is usually three hours long, unless it's a special event. And then it could be six. What might we learn from these siblings in Christ? Where they have 
either one to four congregations gathered together under a parish, and one of their most pressing concerns is finding a way to share the good news of Jesus with people who have never heard. For just as Jesus redirects the disciples from stopping someone else who is casting out demons in Jesus' name in a different way than following the disciples' way, even today there are still too many death-dealing forces that could use a shared collective call to action. In many and various ways, we get to respond The crisis does not need to be fighting within a community or dividing a community into little pieces, but to speak and to act as Jesus taught, rejecting all the forces that separate us from God, responding to divisions and disasters and devastations from war and flooding and hurricanes, all with a shared attention to the most vulnerable, the way Jesus modeled his ministry. Jesus says to have salt in yourselves and to be at peace with one another. As we look to going back into our daily lives from this place, may we slow down just a bit to reconsider the ways that we view other people and speak of each other, to consider what it is that we hold in common and how God gathers up even enemies, even strangers, even neighbors into one beloved community. Amen.
Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed, found in the front section of the Red ELW on page 105, and projected on the screen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the Church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. We pray for the people of God in all places. Shape our witness to the good news of Jesus that we joyfully share your transforming love with all whom we encounter. Hear us, O God. We pray for the healing of the earth. Renew oceans and seas, marshes and estuaries. Uphold the work of conservationists, oceanographers, and all who care for fragile ecosystems and habitats. Hear us, O God. We pray for peace and cooperation among local and global communities. And bless the efforts of community organizers, international aid workers, and all those who work for justice and peace around the world. Hear us, O God. We pray for all who are in any need. To all who grieve, bring consolation. To all who are weary or lonely, bring solace. By your grace, make your presence known among all who call to you for healing, especially those we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O God. We pray for caregivers, doctors and nurses, home health aides and counselors, and those who care for loved ones. Sustain them in their work and help us to build a health care system that supports all. Hear us, O God. We give thanks for the saints who now rest in your eternal presence, especially Clark Phillips, father of Cindy Meyer. In thanksgiving for their lives of faithful service and witness, we commend them to your loving care. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share a sign of Christ's peace. Thank you. One of my favorite memories is a time where the fire alarm went off. It was not a drill. We didn't know what it was. So we all found our way to the parking lot and were able to grab communion on the way. So we shared communion outside. <laughs> uh, thank you. We hope to never have a case of emergency. Very grateful for your time. Uh, your gifts for ministry support uh, Grace Lutheran Church. And then a portion of Grace's offerings share, are shared with the mission support to the Northern Illinois Synod. And from the Northern Illinois Synod, a significant portion go to our ELCA churchwide. We're church together and these different expressions, and that's what equips us to be able to do so many ministries, to have people committed to Lutheran disaster response, uh, to world hunger, and to being a part of something that is bigger than ourselves. So for our, your gifts, we give thanks. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. God, our bread of life, our table and our food, you created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to share, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, now and forever. Amen. Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come, here is your God. All are welcome.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, follow Jesus.